Welcome back to The Path to Happiness. I'm your host, Dr. Tyler Hendricks. Whether or not people believe in the fall, or even in religion, humankind is aware that something is really wrong with the world. That's why in every culture, we find an expectation that the world is going to end. This ending is often called the apocalypse. And in the field of religion, it is the study of eschatology or the last things. Eschatology brings to mind big natural disasters, terror, and war. Religious groups present dazzling scenarios of the end of the world. And even though these prophecies are always wrong, people's faith in eschatology continues. The book of Revelation, uh, given to St. John, presents a dramatic natural and social phenomena that are, that are going to take place in the last days. Others make predictions uh, as to when this is going to happen. American religious groups, from the Jehovah's Witnesses and Family Radio, all the way to the Branch Davidians and Heaven's Gate and People's Temple did so. The Japanese group Aleph and the local Korean group Oh Taeyang Church and the All Mission Church are other examples, and they're all over the world, Africa, South America, everywhere. Recently, people said that the ancient Mayan calendar predicted an apocalypse on December 21st, 2012. It, it caused a big buzz in the media and inspired the movie 2012. Of course, nothing happened. The date came and went. So what do we make of all this confusion? What it means is we don't really have a reliable view of history. We need a systematic view of the principles of history so that we can combine this, this spiritual sense that humankind has that we're going towards some culmination, but we don't know when, we don't know how, we don't know why. So we need to find order through the chaos, some way to grasp history universally. We need principles that underlie the cause and effect behind historical events and trends, not just externally, based on geography, economics, politics, but internally based on human relationships with each other, with God and other spiritual forces. So what is the value of a correct historical view? Through a correct historical view, we establish our vision and a strategy to realize it. Through a correct historical view, we can establish plans to solve realistic problems. Also, the establishment of a correct historical view is connected directly to our personal outlook on life. A correct outlook on life naturally will include a correct view of history. Views of history can be categorized by three factors. Who or what is the driving force of history? the nature of the start and direction and destination of history, and whether history's direction is straight, spiral, or circular. Methods of interpretation include the providential view, the social history view, the archaeological view, the great man theory, the conflict of cultures and civilizations view, materialistic views, and many others. The unification principle addresses this in its chapter entitled Eschatology. Until now, men and women have not known how history started and how it develops. That is why we don't have any basis to talk reasonably about the end of history. To know these things, we have to understand why God created the universe and the mission of human beings in the universe. The truth of the fall, our relationship with God after the fall, and the basis on which God continues his relationship with us. As I mentioned in the purpose of creation, God's purpose in making the universe was to achieve happiness. Therefore, our purpose in life is to find happiness through fulfilling three blessings, which makes us happy and returns happiness to God, who is our parent. 
people can't become the partner of God's happiness by just knowing his purpose. We have to live according to that purpose. To stand as a partner of God's happiness is the perfection of individuality. And if a person accomplishes authentic individuality, God will dwell in their heart. And eventually he or she will become a temple of God and will live according to God's will. A person who has become one with God will gain divinity and would have no desire ever to sin and therefore would never fall. Now, if Adam and Eve completed their individuality free from sin and had children and accomplished one family, society, and nation, according to the Genesis 1.28 blessing of multiply, that would have been a heaven centered on one set of true parents. Heaven works like a person of completed individuality. Just as a body follows the vertical commands from the brain and has cells and organs that work in a horizontal relationship with each other, the society of heaven would follow the vertical commands from God and have individuals, families, and social networks that work together. In a society like this, if one person were hurt, the whole society would feel God's sadness together, so no one would want to hurt others. As God blessed us to have dominion over all things, if we develop science to love and steward nature, we will create a comfortable and healthy community. That would be heaven on earth. Like this, if people live by fulfilling heaven on earth and enter the spirit world, the spirit world will become heaven in heaven. Therefore, God's purpose of creation was always one thing, to build heaven on earth and to do that first and then heaven in heaven. However, because the ancestors of humankind fell, the object partner that resembles God was incomplete. We became one body with Satan and became malign, not divine. Because people with this malady reproduced children with sin and made families and societies and a whole world, this world is hell on earth. Here on earth, the vertical tie to God is broken. And so the horizontal ties between people are also broken. People don't know that God exists and that the spirit world exists. We don't feel the pain of our neighbors and we even seek to harm our neighbors. We have made a world that considers Satan to be God. People like, like this live in hell on earth and eventually naturally create hell in the spirit world. But God is the God of feelings and he is our true parent, Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother. So God doesn't let this be and just leave us and the whole world in this situation. God has to save this world of crime and sin. God also will not just save some people and not others. His salvation will be complete. It will be universal for everybody. The history of God's salvation is the essential, true history of humanity. It is of God. So we call it providential. And it is to save us. So it is the providence of salvation. And to save people who fell means to return them to their original state of creation. So the history of providential salvation becomes the history of restoration. And the primary purpose of history is to create a world that has fulfilled those original three blessings, which means to bring heaven to the earth. As you see here, the history of humanity is 
God's history. It is the providence of salvation. It is the history of the providential restoration to the state of the original creation. And we have to fulfill heaven on earth first. Therefore, this physical world cannot literally end. And God does not save, again, only a few. He saves everyone universally. God, as the parent of humankind, will take interest in every little lost lamb to each one of us and pay no attention to gender. He won't treat the rich and the poor differently. God jumps the wall between nations, races, and religions and saves all of humanity in the history of the providence. Therefore, the unification principle's view of history begins with the beginning point of humanity's creation, explains the fall, and presents God's purpose of creation as the direction and destination of history. Because the destination of history is the realization of heaven on earth, God will not destroy our universe, and certainly He will not allow us to do so. Thank you so much for your kind attention. I'll see you next time.